Good morning, everybody. I am Jenny, and I'm so excited to welcome you all to our very first Harvest Live lesson. Did you know that there are over 25,000 of you joining us here today? That's absolutely amazing. Thank you so much for being here with us. I think it might just be the biggest Harvest I Festival think so. ever. We're so excited to, uh, to, to see you all here. I'm so excited to get started. We've got so many adventures planned for this morning. We're going to learn all about different types of harvest, different types of vegetables, and then we're going to put all that learning together in one big rainbow salad. So I can't wait to get going. Josh, do you want to get started I with just some can't shout wait, outs? Jenny. We're going to do a few shout outs now. There, honestly, there's hundreds of you who should ask for shouts. I'm afraid we're not going to have time for all of them, but we're going to do a big shout out to Brompton Westbrook, a Hi. big shout out to Springwell School, who are in Heston in London, the year twos at Donington Wood Infant School. You're learning about all about fruit and vegetable this week. I think you're in the right place. Um, hello to class one slash two at Grimley and Holt Primary School, and hello to year one and two at Furley Park in Ashford, who I hear have been busy collecting donations for your Harvest Festival on Friday this oh, week. Oh, brilliant. Great to have you on board. I can't wait to get started. Now, as we go through today, this is an interactive lesson, so you'll be able to see that on the screen in a second, you're going to see how you can interact. You can use the chat function with the guys from Encounter Edu, so they'll be there. You can have the interactive live support chat, or you can send questions via the live Q and A. So get them all coming in. We really can't wait to get started with you. Uh, and we're gonna pass it back over to Jenny. So as we go through our harvest adventure, what we'd really like you to do is, carry, is to complete the harvest uh, live, um, sorry, it's not the harvest live, the harvest um, rainbow adventure uh, sheet. Uh, we'd like you, to, which you should be able to see on your screen now, um, coming up on the screen. Um, it will be coming up on the screen any moment now. Um, that's it, there it is. So we'd like you to build your harvest rainbow with us as we're building ours. So the first thing we need to do when we're making a harvest rainbow salad is we need to know what's the first colour of the rainbow. Now I know Josh does struggle with this a little bit, oh, don't I you find Josh? It very, very difficult. So what we'll do rainbow. is we will ask some of the 25,000 children that are here with us this morning, what is the first colour of the rainbow? What colour ingredients do we need to be I collecting this know. morning? You know what I think? If they shout at their whiteboard or projector they've got in their classroom loud enough, so. 25,000 of them we'll be able to hear it here in Stonely in our studio. So do you think you can do that? Do you think you could shout, what is the first colour of the rainbow, everybody? Let's listen. Can we hear them? Yes, I think they are. I think they're shouting. Amazing. So I can hear the answer, red. red. So oh, next question, everybody. What, can you think of any red ingredients that we could collect for our harvest rainbow salad um, that, we could, that we could put in first? What, what, what red ingredients can you think of? Let's have a listen and see. Is there anyone coming through some, on the chat with some answers? Well, we can or have can a look we on the them? chat. We can have a look on the table. Oh, yes. Well. Yeah, let's have a we look on the table. You might see some, uh, some clues. Now, Josh, did, well, Josh went on this adventure, didn't you? You went on an adventure to collect the red ingredient. So should we play okay, the video? So I went to Valley Growing Salads. I had a wonderful time mm -hmm. with Gary. Let's see what I found. Now, Gary, these tomatoes look absolutely amazing. What do you need to grow the perfect tomato? Well, for, for a start, you need decent sunlight, and we've certainly got that in abundance <laughs> today. We need water, so everything needs water. I need water, plants need water, everything needs water. It needs CO2, so it needs carbon dioxide, and it needs the green from these leaves in order to produce these tomatoes that you see here. So Gary, obviously we're inside here though, so how does all the water and CO2 that these plants need to grow get to them? Very simple really. We don't have any mains water here on site, Josh. Everything comes from rainwater. So the rainwater hits the glass, it goes into the gutter, it goes into a giant reservoir, which is 35 million litres, the equivalent of 12 or 13 Olympic sized swimming pools. And how do the plants get pollinated? How do you get get bees or anything like that inside to make that work? Well, strangely, we actually buy the bees, or you can rent the bees. We buy the bees, and these bees are bees that you will see flying locally, and these are bumblebees, and these pollinate the tomatoes that you see here. Superb, and you were just showing me some really interesting little critters on one of the leaves over here as well, so that you use to make sure there aren't any pests on the plant. So these insects occur in nature, and these insects will eat the pests. So we put in the good guys to feed on the bad guys. So 
as if we can find one, there is an example of one of the good guys. Fantastic. The good guys. Ready to take any bad guys who want to, uh, ready, ready to damage feed. these fantastic plants. So Gary, it sounds like it's a lot of effort to grow these indoors. What's the advantage? What results do you get by doing it in here? Well, we can control them far better. So we, we have a computer that will control everything. And these plants will grow 50 centimetres a week in the summer. So the head of the plant you see here and the root system is 14 metres away down there. Absolutely amazing to grow them so tall, a lot bigger than I think any tomato plant that you'll see in your mum or dad's allotment, or that you could grow in school. 14 to 15 metres for one tomato plant and growing so fast that they grow above my height in under four weeks. Superb. And these are amazing. These are, tomatoes grown here are called Axiania, and this is the only place in Britain that grows this type of tomato. And I have to tell you, they are absolutely delicious. So I'm going to bring some back for our salad, but probably not this punnet because I'm going to have them to myself. So. Did you actually bring any tomatoes back for us, Josh, or did you eat them all in the car? I did eat most of them in the car. <laughs> I have to admit, they're pretty tasty. But they the good tasty. news is I've got a few here that we can use for our rainbow salad. Some tomatoes Perfect. that are lovely. So Brilliant. well done to everyone who guessed red tomatoes as the first ingredient for our salad. Brilliant. So how are we going to how are we going to prepare them for the salad then, Josh? Well, can you show us? We're going to use a method, method called the bridge method. Mm -hmm. and we're going to use our left hand with our tomato and make a little bridge over our tomato. Like this. Get it nice and solidly on our chopping board. Get our knife in our right hand, or if you're left-handed, you need to do this the other way around. You need to use your writing hand to use the knife. And we're gonna do a nice straight slice down the middle in between our bridge. I always like to think of this as a train going through a tunnel, but then changing its mind and then coming back out coming again. Coming back out again. Let's see if we can do this. The train's going in. Oh, and that's then a nice swishy again. tomato, that one as well. This is gonna be delicious for our mm. salad. Fantastic, right. Being very careful with your fingers. I've ready, yeah, and put my knife to the side again now. Now I've finished chopping. Perfect. So while we get that into our, into our jar to do the first layer of our um, salad, the, we need to think about the next ingredient. So the next mm. colour of the rainbow is orange. And I went on an adventure recently. I went all the way to Norfolk to learn all about some delicious orange carrots. So let's have a look at the video and see what I got up to. Hello everyone, I've come to a carrot farm here in Norfolk to learn all about how carrots are grown and where they come from. But I don't know what's going on because I've come out to the carrot field and I can't see any lovely orange carrots anywhere. Luckily though, I've got Andrew the carrot farmer here with me and he's a carrot expert so hopefully he can tell me where all these carrots are hiding. Andrew, thank you for having us. Where are all your carrots please? Well. All this lovely green leaves yes. are the carrot tops and underneath, under the ground, are the lovely long orange carrots. So they're hiding in the soil under the ground? Yes, they are. Yeah, oh. they're buried in the ground about this deep. Oh, wow. So they're the roots of the, uh, the, roots of the, the plant, roots. are they? Oh, so yep. the part that we actually eat is actually the root of the plant. I didn't know that. Um, so can we, can we pull one out? How does it work? How do we get them out? Well, we don't pull them out by hand like you do in the garden. We have big machines because we're harvesting six million carrots out of this field today. So we have a big machines come along. The first machine chops all the tops off. Oh, you can smell it fresh as well. It smells so. Uh... It smells wonderful. Yeah. Now we can have a look at these carrots now. So now the carrot tops are chopped off. You can see the tops of the carrots just poking through the soil look. Can everyone see? Can you see the bright orange carrots peeking out through the soil? Wow, isn't that amazing? So they were here all along. They were hiding in this field and I just couldn't see them because they They're were under away. the ground. And this big machine that's coming along now is going to dig them out dig of them the out. ground and then sort them out from the soil and put them in the trailer ready to go off to the factory. Oh, brilliant. So how did you, tell us a bit about how did you get, how did these carrots get here? What did you do to grow these carrots from the beginning? Well, these carrots, they grow from tiny little seeds the size of a pinhead. Wow, so really small. And we plant a million seeds for every acre. So wow. there's two and a half million seeds on a bit of field the size of a football pitch. Gosh, two and a half million seeds, that's incredible. And it takes 
about 100 days to grow to the full carrot. Okay. By which time we've used ladybirds to control the green fly. We've worked really in harmony with nature to grow this really tasty crop. Very healthy, very easy to prepare. Yeah. You don't have to peel it. And it's a wonderfully healthy snack. Yeah, I absolutely love carrots. It's one of my favourites. Uh, well, thank you so much for showing us. Okay, are we going to see the other machine coming along now? Yep. Brilliant. This big machine over here comes along and digs them all up. There's a great big spade about two metres wide that digs the whole bed of soil up. And then the, the machine is basically a giant sieve. And it sieves the soil from the carrots. And then at the back of the machine, there's a thing called a hedgehog, which takes any last little bits of green leaf out of the crop. And then the carrots all go up an elevator to the trailer and then off to the factory. But not a real hedgehog, just a machine hedgehog. Not a real hedgehog, a just a machine hedgehog. hedgehog. I think. We better get out of the way. Oh, yeah. So now we've seen how carrots go from teeny tiny seeds buried in the ground to 100 days later turning into these delicious fresh orange carrots that can be harvested here on Andrew's farm. So we've seen them being harvested by the, uh, the carrot harvesting uh, machinery. Uh, what happens to them next? They go off to be washed and sorted and then they're sent to every supermarket all over the country. Wow, all over the country. So there's a really good chance that if you've got carrots in your kitchen at the moment, that they've come from this farm here. Isn't that amazing? And you can tell everyone how they grow and how, where they come from. Um, I'm going to take these delicious fresh carrots that I've harvested here. I'm going to take them back and I'm going to turn, turn them into my amazing rainbow salad. Um, but I really want to- But I'm going to have this one. This is my breakfast. <laughs> I bet that tastes really fresh. It's amazing. Mm. I can't wait to pick, have mine in my rainbow salad. Oh, thanks for bringing these carrots, Jenny. You found them in the end under the ground. Then. I did. Those cheeky carrots were hiding from me underneath the ground. But yeah, we've got them in the end. We've got them. Plenty of carrots. Let's think about how we can put these in the salad. Well, we've done some chopping. This time we're going to do some grating. So mm -hmm. I've got my trusty grater here, everybody. I've got my carrot. And what we're going to do is we're going to grate it. Now make sure I'm going to get the carrot on the end again with my writing hand. I'm going to hold the grater, not in the middle of the air because that's not safe. But I'm going to have it here, get my carrot on the grater and start grating away, making sure that we've got lovely, lots of lovely grated carrot for our salad. Amazing. So while Josh is grating, um, I'm going to ask you a quick question. So on the screen, in a second, you'll see some quick questions. So you might have heard in the, um, in the video um, the answer to this first one. But when we eat a carrot, which part of the plant are we eating? Um, you might have heard the answer if you were listening really carefully. See if you can pop the answer in the chat. Um, and then the second question, uh, when we eat a tomato, which part of a tomato plant are we eating? So again, I'll give you a couple of seconds to answer both of those. And then we will uh, talk about the answers. Okay, so when we, uh, when we eat a carrot, we're actually eating the root of the plant. So well done if you heard that on the video. The, the part of the plant, the root, that, um, the job that the root, the root does for the plant is that it keeps the plant securely in the, in the soil, in the ground, and it takes up water and nutrients from the soil into the plant. And the second question was about the tomato. When we eat a tomato, we're eating the fruit of a plant. And inside the fruit is where all the seeds are. And the seeds are what we need so that the, the tomato plant can reproduce or make more of itself. So uh, the fruit is, how, is um, where, it, where all the seeds are to make the new tomato plants. So well done if you've got that right. So the next colour that we need for our rainbow salad is yellow. Um, did you know the answer to that one, Josh? You looked a bit puzzled, was, but it yeah, is, it's yellow. I was yellow. getting a bit unsure, but thankfully you stepped in. <laughs> Quite a tricky one to think about what actually we could use there for yellow. Ingredients, yeah. So yeah. let's see. Josh went on, an, an, on a trip again, didn't you? I did. And you collected some yellow ingredients. So we're going to go watch another video to see which yellow ingredient Josh um, collected while he was on his latest adventure. So Gary, how do these peppers get from these vines 
all the way to our shops and to our dinner plates. So we buy these plants in first week of January and these plants grow and grow to the extent of about five centimetres a week, a bit more some weeks, a bit less than other weeks, depending on how good or bad the weather is. These plants will grow towards the light. So where you see the head of the plant now is where it's in the light. And if you can see up at the top of the plant, there's a flower and that flower becomes a small pepper and that small pepper, as you f follow it all the way down the plant, becomes this red pepper. It takes about, at the moment, it takes about six weeks from that white flower to this red pepper that you will see in the shops. Fantastic. And how do you know then, Gary, that the peppers are ready? Well, they go from green. So they start off green. So most peppers, virtually all peppers, whether it's a red or a yellow or an orange, starts green. And when it turns completely red, then we know it's ready to pick. So once we've got a lovely red pepper like this, these look fantastic, what happens next? How do, we, how do you pick the peppers here at Valley Grown Nurseries? Well, these peppers are picked into bins. So there is a trolley which runs on the rails. So this works as a rail system, but it also works as a heating system. So it heats the peppers in the winter when we don't get the sun. At the moment, we've got too much sun, so uh, we, we don't need the heating, but we use it as a rail system. So the peppers are picked into the bins. The bins are automatically, when, the, when they finish the row, they will automatically go into the pack house and they will be packed and sent ready for you to eat. And I heard actually that you've got quite a lot of these rails. How many miles of these rails do you have at Valley Grown now? So in this glass house alone, we've got 200 rows of 150 metres of rails. So that's a maths problem for you there. If there's any maths whizzes in your class there, I'd love to know if you can do 200 times 150 and work out just in this one single glass house how many of those rails there are. Send us a comment, send us your answer, and we'll see if we can work out how much they could be because that's a fantastic, a fantastic amount. So we can see now then, Gary, that they've gone into the pack house. Can you explain a little bit about what's happening in the pack house now as we follow the peppers on their journey? Well, the bins as they leave here, it's an automatic system, so it's a computerised system. So the bins go on their own along a rail system into the packing system. They are then automatically lifted from the trolleys where you see where they were picked. They are then put into a, a rack. They're moved along the rack and they're then tipped onto the grader they go along the grader into a grey bin and then those grey bins are tipped and that's where you see the traffic light pack or the red, yellow and orange peppers that, that, that we see here. Fantastic. Thanks so much, Gary. And I'm going to be taking some of these fantastic sweet peppers. This is a red, orange, yellow pack that Gary was talking about. And we're going to see how we can put that in our amazing rainbow salad. And we're here with our yellow ingredient. And this was a pepper. I had such a great time at Valley Grown Salads again with Gary. And you can see someone's already cut my pepper in half for me, a grown up. And we're going to think about how we chop this pepper. But before we chop it up, I just want to tell you a little fact that I learned when I was with Gary. OK, now I thought with these peppers that they went from green to yellow to red, like a traffic light. Mm, I thought that too. But actually, I found out from Gary that all peppers start off as green and they can turn into one of three colours, yellow, orange and red. But as you can see, we've already got red and orange in our salad already. So we're going to chop up this lovely yellow pepper using the bridge method again. Brilliant. Um, so while you're doing that, Josh, let's move on to the next ingredient. The next ingredient that we need is a green one. The next colour of the rainbow is green. So we've chosen for, um, for our green ingredient, we've chosen some lovely green celery. Um, and so the question I'm going to ask you now, while Josh is chopping up that pepper, is um, what part of the plant are we eating when we eat celery? Have a, have a look at the, um, the question and see if you can answer that one for me. Okay, so the part of the plant that we eat when we're eating, uh, eating celery is actually the stem of the plant. And the job that the stem does for the plant is that it holds the plant up, it supports it, but it's also really, really clever because it um, transports the water. So the water comes into the plant through the root and then the water is then trans transported to all the other parts of the plant using the stem. And what's really cool about celery is if Josh starts his chopping, um, you'll see it in a second, yeah. 
The really cool thing about um, celery is that you can see the little holes, the little pipes where the water gets transported. Uh, Josh, you're going to use a different method I for am. this, aren't I've you? I've just started already, Jenny. I'm using a different method now called the claw method. And what you can see is my left hand here is going to make a little claw. I'm going to move it a little bit further back from the knife because I want to keep my fingers nice and safe. I make my little claw, I hold the celery down nice and tight with it, and then I chop towards myself. Now, what I need to make sure is I'm getting close to my fingers, I move my little claw back, and we keep on chopping away, get ourselves some lovely celery for our rainbow salad using that green colour. So we've got red, orange, yellow, and green. You see, I'm learning my rainbow colours. You are, yeah, this is good. Um, so, the next ingredient is going to, was definitely the trickiest one, wasn't it, Josh? Because we thought about this for a really long time. We thought, what ingredient can we use that is blue? How many blue ingredients are there that we can actually use? So, eventually, after a lot of, lot of thinking, we came up with a plan to ask our lovely friend Zoe if she could help us out with a blue ingredient. I wonder if anyone can guess what it is, mm, okay. but let's go to the video and show you what we found when we went to visit our friend Zoe. Let's have a look. Hello everyone, I'm at Me Farmers which is a farm near Peterborough and I've come here today to learn all about blueberries and where they come from. I'm here with Zoe who is a blueberry expert and a blueberry grower. Thank you so much for having <laughs> us here Zoe. Um, can you tell us a bit, a bit about your blueberries? So uh, first of all, uh, where do they come from? How do you grow them? Okay, so people may be surprised to know that blueberries are grown in the UK. We see a lot of exports in the shops and very few people know that they're grown here. So blueberries are quite difficult to grow. Mm -hmm. We can't just plant them in the soil on our farm. We have to have special soil made to grow the blueberries in. It's mixed up and it's put down in a bed. The blueberries are then planted, but then because we have tunnels over them, to protect them because they like to be kept warm during the summer to produce these lovely bright big berries for us we have to still water them so where do we get our water from near to the farm we have the river neen so we pump the water from the river neen into a big holding tank in the farmyard then in the field and in each row of blueberries we have two black pipes where the water runs and it trickles water at the roots of every plant but we have to look after those plants or the plants to make sure that they don't grow too big mm -hmm. if they grow too big they'll produce lots of little berries right we want them to produce fewer berries but big plump juicy berries i've really noticed this if you look everyone here look at the size of the blueberries on this blueberry bush they are absolutely huge they're almost the size of grapes so what's the secret Zoe? How do you get these blueberries so big? Okay, so there are different varieties of blueberries. This particular one here is called Barbara Ann. As we say, it's a very big berry, it can be the size of a 20 pence piece, even up to the size of a 50 pence piece. Wow. And this one has the subtle taste of black currant. So if anybody likes Ribena, these blueberries are perfect for you. Oh, I love Ribena, that's amazing. <laughs> So how do we know when they're ready to pick? Okay, so if we look at this bunch of blueberries here, yeah. you will see that some of the berries are still very pink. Yes, yeah. And then they gradually go through a sort of slight purple colour, uh -huh. and then they end up being this lovely deep blue. Oh yes, that's a lovely colour, isn't it? And this it? one is very big, yep. and it's blue all the way round. So if you'd like to pick that one, Jenny. Oh, I'm gonna pick one for myself, amazing. And so um, how do you pick them here? Are they, all, are they all picked by hand? Yes, so all the blueberries here are picked by hand. They're then taken from the field in trays to our pack house, which is on the farm. And in the pack house, we grade them. So we take out any that are too soft or ones that may have been picked that are still a little under ripe mm -hmm. or if they've been damaged in any way, they get packed into punnets. And every day we'll have a lorry come and collect the blueberries in a big lorry with a fridge on the back to keep them nice and cold 
and they're then taken to the supermarket depots. And that's so they can go to the supermarkets where we can all yep. buy them. Absolutely. Amazing. I'm certainly going to be looking for these in the supermarkets. <laughs> I'm really tempted to try this and see if it tastes like Ribena. Is that okay? <laughs> it is okay. Oh, amazing. Mmm. It is. It's just like Ribena. Well, I certainly, I cannot <laughs> wait to take these blueberries back with me to um, the studio so that I can make a blueberry dressing for our rainbow salad. Thank you so much, Zoe. Yeah, that was, I, I've learned so much. <laughs>
Uh, farming isn't difficult, but it is complicated. So we grow carrots, and to make sure that we've got carrots for you every day of the year, we have to plant them every day, and then we have to harvest them and wash them every day. And I think the video you've seen or will see shows us harvesting the carrots. It does. It did indeed. Yeah, we did show that. What about you, Zoe? What do you think? Is, is farming difficult? Um, again, you could think it's difficult, um, but we find it um, varied. Um, there's lots and lots of different jobs that we have to do on the farm. So it might be learning about how we grow our plants. Mm -hmm. It's about how we keep our machinery working all the time. We have to learn how to recruit lots of staff. And we also have to make sure we do our office work to make sure that we're doing all our figures and replying to all our emails and putting things out on social media. So there's lots and lots of different jobs involved in farming. Mm. So we just find it challenging and interesting and it makes every year a different job. So it does, it sounds very varied. And uh, Noff, what do you think? I agree with um, the previous two. It, it's it's a bit Call. Um, when things go your way, it's a breeze, but there are things that are out of our control, so the weather is a big part of that. I'm yeah. sure um, the two farmers would agree with that. But um, yeah, I mean, finding staff is difficult, and uh, having a good team will make things easier, but it's never easy. Um, <laughs> but but um, so far, so good. Wow, fantastic. That's great answers for all three. We should have introduced Noff as well. Gary's a little bit busy today at Valley Grown Salad, so Noff has kindly stepped in and he's going to be uh, telling us all about the tomatoes and the peppers if you've got any questions about them, just in case you're wondering who he was. Yeah, sorry about that, guys. That was, uh, that was my fault. Um, so let's, let's go to Noff, actually, for another, another question. This one's from Notting Hill and Ealing Primary School. Um, so do you ever have too many of one colour pepper? Do you ever end up with too many of the same? Um, you do, you do sometimes because uh, um, the plants, when you're picking peppers or growing peppers, they're never all ready at the same time. It, it goes up in waves so that you can have quite a few thousand kilos one week and then less. So we try and balance it out. Um, uh, when we can foresee that, we can speak to our customers and we can maybe do a promotion mm -hmm. so the sales can go up. Or we may reduce one week from, say, Instead of picking 20,000 and the next week 10,000, we may try and balance it so we get 15,000 per week, for example. But there's a lot of planning from the team to, to foresee that. But yes, you do get more than, than others in, in certain weeks. There's such big numbers that you're working with sure, as well. You've got to be yeah. good at maths to yeah, do a farm. Are there absolutely. any mathematicians out there? I think there might be a job at NOFS for you. Yeah. Um, so the next question is from Midfield Primary, and that one is for Zoe. Um, so how do you get your harvest to the shop? Right, okay, so you probably saw from the video that um, the, the blueberries get picked out in the field. We then have to sort the good berries out um, and the bad ones in our pack out. And all the good berries are put into plastic punnets. And I would like just to say that they are recyclable punnets. Um, the punnets are then put into crates and they are then strapped onto a pallet. And we will have lorries come and collect our fruit um, several times a day. The lorries um, have fridge bodies um, because they berries need to be kept nice and cold at all stages. And the fruit is then taken to supermarket depots. So when the fruit arrives at the depots, the fruit then gets divided up and that then gets transported by lots of different lorries out to the branches of that supermarket. Okay, brilliant, thank you. And so, Andrew, how much water do you need for your uh, carrots to grow? That one came from um, Wivelsfield Primary School. Well, carrots actually need a lot of water. Um, most of it comes from rainfall, but we do have to water them as well. So, same as you would in your garden, and they need about two centimetres every week through the summer. Um, and I've got another really good one for you, actually, um, Andrew. Um, how do you know that the carrots are ready to be harvested? That one's from St. Brewwood's School. We, we know that because we go in the fields with our fork and we dig them up. And when they're big enough, it's about as thick as our thumb um, and about that long. Then we, we'll eat a few to make sure they're nice and tasty. 
and then we know they're ready for harvesting. Um, and then I've got a really good one here for Zoe as well from Manor Primary School. How do the blueberries grow so big? That was a question I asked, asked as well. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So uh, the, with, with blueberries, there are lots of different varieties. So some blueberries are quite small and some are much larger. Our largest ones are about the size of a 20 pence piece to a 50 pence piece. Um, they do need lots of water. They get four short cycles of water every single day. And they also get some special um, feed to make them grow big as well. They are absolutely delicious, those blueberries. We had a, a product in the office that we brought back and oh my days, they disappeared so quickly because they were so delicious. They were very yummy. Um, so we've got one more for Noth as well now. So it says, why do the, um, the fruit and fruits and vegetables change colour? Why do the peppers change colour? I think that's relating to. And that one, they haven't put a name on that one. So they're all, it's all to do with the variety. So um, there are seed houses that develop lots of new peppers sizes and colours, but the main colours for our market is the green, red, yellow and orange. So um, it is the seed houses and they can, they, they will make a variety depending on our, our needs. Okay, thank you, brilliant. Um, Someone wants to ask a question, I think. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's all we've got time for now. So uh, thank you so much to everyone for answering our questions. Thank you for joining us again, for giving us your time. Um, <laughs> Yes, that's the... Uh... Yeah, it's been absolutely fantastic to have you with us today. Please do send any more questions. We'll see if we can get any answers on them uh, and send them back to schools if we have time. Equally, we'd love to see... If you can make an amazing harvest rainbow salad like this, we'd love to see them. So remember that, at NFU Education on Twitter. Also, we're on Facebook, which is forward slash NFU Schools. And if you've got some slightly older children in your class, you've got some key stage two, so you know anyone who's seven to 11, tomorrow you can join us at Joseph Healer Dairies where we're gonna be making a harvest pizza and finding out about where cheese comes from. But for today, thank you all for joining us. We've had a fantastic day with you. Enjoy your harvest festival and enjoy your salads. Thank you, everybody. See you tomorrow.